Okay, great. The recording has started. Uh, would somebody like to volunteer to pray? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we glorify your name. Father, as we go to listen to this word, may you give us wisdom and understanding. May you protect us, may your Holy Spirit move, and let the words that we are going to learn bear fruits in our life. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul, for, for leading in prayer. Uh, I didn't notice. I think John also was going to pray, and then I saw a Sitkinu's hand. But good, good to have so many takers to lead in prayer. Uh, we'll quickly look back at some of the things that we talked of in the last class, and then we will move forward. So in the last class, we understood the meaning of authority. When we say somebody has authority, how did they get that authority? How can they exercise the authority? What does it mean? So we answered those questions. And then uh, we went ahead and talked about spiritual authority. We said that you know this authority makes us victorious in our spiritual lives. We are able to overcome and dominate demonic disturbances, disruptions through this authority. We are able to serve and assist others around us through this authority and also fulfill our responsibility here on earth. And then we quickly looked at the fact that God has created mankind uh, to rule and reign here on the earth. He has uh, given this earth to uh, mankind. Okay, when I say mankind, man, woman, you know, every every human being. And we saw how uh, there was the disobedience of Adam and Eve that led to their fall and the world was corrupted through sin. Uh, when this happened, this also made sure that the authority which was given to them was now transferred to Satan. So the world now is under the sway of Satan. When we use terms like uh, God is in control, it's actually true in a sense. But then uh, the world is affected by the activities of the enemy as well. So everything that happens on the earth, everything that happens in our lives is not just God. Okay? God wants justice and peace and victory and uh, healing and deliverance, all that for our lives. But why do we still experience suffering, challenges, sickness? Because there is an enemy who is uh, affecting the world. Okay. Uh, through, and it all started through the fall. And thereby, you know, there was a need for God to do something to claim back the authority that Satan had taken once again. And that is what he did through the life of the Lord Jesus and his sacrifice. So once the Lord Jesus, he died on the cross for us, we know that the work of redemption was completed. And the authority that Satan took from us, you know, that was bought back. And thereby, uh, we as believers, and Jesus also said, all authority on heaven and earth uh, is given to me and I give it to you. The Lord Jesus has redeemed us and he has given us back our authority. And that is why believers, even though this world is interrupted by the works of Satan, we can still exercise our God-given authority and continue to live a victorious life. Then we saw that the spiritual realm, okay, it's a very uh, real realm and uh, there is a connection between the spiritual and the natural realm. Uh, people can engage in the spiritual realm through various ways. Um, and because we are studying about believers' authority, that can be used to overcome the demonic powers, we try to understand how the demonic realm 
uh, works or the kingdom of darkness. We termed it as the kingdom of darkness works. We saw that the kingdom of darkness can influence individual circumstances, world situations, geographic regions, cultural forms, um, organizations, activities, building spaces, homes, and things like that. And how is it that people end up engaging with the kingdom of darkness through disciplines, through certain practices that people have that opens them up to the demonic realm, prayers and worship and meditation. That's why these things are so dangerous. Okay, and We shouldn't be engaging in them. Dedications, when people are uh, committed or it's not just people when you uh, dedicate objects or art forms you know, some art forms are dedicated right to certain gods so they then become an influence or an expression of those gods or spirits all right so anything that is dedicated to uh, the spirit realm becomes an expression of that uh, uh, that that uh, spirit so the opposite of that when we talk about god and us and when we dedicate ourselves to god you know we become an expression of god's love god's life his power uh, and all the good things that god wants to release through our lives so this is the way in which you know engagement into the spirit realm happens so dedication disciplines dedications then we said sacrifices uh, so unfortunately all kinds of sacrifices uh, are done, material sacrifices, even animal sacrifices, human sacrifices. And through this, people try to please the spirits in the kingdom of darkness. But the flip side, again, for us as believers is that the Lord Jesus, the firstborn, uh, you know, he has already been sacrificed for us. And when we put our trust in him, you know, we are able to engage in the kingdom of light, and have the release of the uh, goodness of the kingdom of light through our lives. We also saw how certain rituals, religious practices also invoke, invoke or uh, they kind of activate the demonic realm. So these are things that you know we must uh, recognize and uh, be uh, careful about, you know, not to engage in certain things. Okay, and I think this is where we, we stop and we will continue further. But I remember telling us that if you have questions, then, uh, you know, you could ask your questions and then we will move forward. Anything uh, based on what you have learned so far? Uh, Pastor, we also read in Psalms 24 mm. that everything is under God's uh, dominion. Yeah. Uh, so what is the balance among the authorities? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, John. So yeah, everything is under God's dominion. Uh, when it comes to interpretation of scripture, I know that you're all also learning uh, hermeneutics. Okay, so we have to interpret scripture based on scripture. It says everything is under God's dominion, but it also says, you know, the God of this world, which is Satan. So, you know, the way we see it is, yes, God put everything in its order, but now there is an interference with because of the enemy. And which is why we as believers... We have to take authority. We have to oust the enemy. Only then we can uh, we can continue to let life be the way God intended. Okay. So in our exercise of authority, what we are also doing is we are releasing that dominion of God on the earth. Okay. So that's how we would see it, John. We can't just go by that one verse. We have to look at all the other verses that all explain to us that there is an interference. And we have to overcome that interference. That, does it make sense to you? Yeah, yes, Master. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. All right. So that's how it uh, it works. Okay. So uh, yeah. So that's why, you know, when people say God is in control, it's partly true. 
not that god is not in control he is very much in control everything belongs to him but he is not responsible for uh the wrong that is going on because when we say god is in control god is the one who should be causing the sickness and you know causing people to die and creating trouble in people's lives but god is not doing that there is an active enemy in this world satan and there is a lot of interference from satan and so god is sovereign or everything comes under god but the other dynamics should also be understood that there is an interfering enemy and yet christ has redeemed us vested us with authority so as a believer my responsibility is i will not sit down and take what satan is doing i will use my authority and say no you know satan you cannot do this this is not god's will i will fight for what has been given to me through the cross the blessings of the cross you know the power of the cross so i need to go against the enemy i cannot accept what the enemy is doing in people's lives okay so that's how we would see this okay anything else i thought you know people from different countries here you would have uh, uh, questions anything about this tent or objects that are dedicated would you have any clarification about these things yeah so you see all this will be helpful uh, especially when we are ministering deliverance to people later study the steps of delivery there can be some objects that people have on their bodies or uh, you know they they possess something uh, in they have it in their homes uh, or you, the space where they are there can be a demonic influence and by considering we can have the uh, understanding that hey so and so is coming under this influence so at that point what we can do is we can actually break it we can also um let them know that hey brother what you're wearing here on your hand uh, it's like a commitment okay so uh, why don't you just break that off or remove it off so some of the things you know you deal with it have them remove it uh, or let's say dedication you know sometimes what happens grandparents well meaning grandparents they want their uh, the, the little babies born in their family to be blessed so they will take and they will dedicate you know i dedicate to this god of beauty or i dedicate to this god of strength i dedicate to this god of money uh, and uh, that kind of stays you know with people and because of such dedications you know, they could be presenting with problems later on and so when we are ministering deliverance to them by the holy spirit so we might have that uh, knowing in a knowing that so and so okay you have to deal with that dedication so we might have to lead them in a prayer that says okay you know i i uh, revoke that dedication i break that commitment in the name of jesus you know i'm no longer dedicated because when there is a dedication there is an open door that the enemy can come in through that door and begin to influence the person so our understanding of the the uh, kingdom of darkness in a sense is helpful for us to move in our authority okay especially when we are ministering deliverance over people's lives so uh, there's a park cut anyway um, so i was saying that that's the reason you know we need to understand uh, all these things so now let's move on we will study a little bit about um, uh the way authority is understood in the spirit world so in the spirit world we already know that there are two kingdoms there is the kingdom of light and there is the kingdom of darkness and we also know that god is a spirit and uh, he is the 
king of glory. Uh, from the New Testament scriptures, we understand that the Lord Jesus is, uh, he is the son and the leader of the kingdom of light. So, you know, the kingdom of light is headed by God. And of course, the kingdom of darkness uh, is headed by Satan. And he has you know, his hierarchy of uh, 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 demonic powers. And we will go and study about it a little later on. So there are two kingdoms. And both the kingdoms have their own structure. But the most important thing that we have to recognize is that the kingdom of light okay, prevails over the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of light has greater authority. And I think I tried explaining to you in the last class that, you know, if you try to understand Satan and God, there is no comparison because Satan is finite. But God is immortal, infinite God, great God. Okay, so there is really no comparison. So that's why when people, uh, they become afraid of Satan and they make this whole thing about the demonic so big and scary uh, to a believer actually it's uh, you know it, it, it shouldn't it should not uh, cause fear to us okay? because we are already overcomers uh, but that's not to say that we minimize what Satan is doing because he is a real enemy he does pose real threats and uh, you know brings real challenges into our lives so we acknowledge that but at the same time we should not be completely consumed by it okay so that's the point that I'm making so there are these two kingdoms uh, one is uh, um, uh, you know run by the Lord the other one is uh, of Satan. Now we will understand a little bit more about the facets of these two kingdoms in relation to authority. So every human being in the world, you know, as far as what the Bible says, you know, belongs to one or the other kingdom. There is no gray area. When we are born again, you know, we are told that we belong to the kingdom of light. We belong to the kingdom of the son of God. We belong to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when I am born again, be very clear about it. Which kingdom do I belong to? Which influence do I come under? I am part of the kingdom of light and I come under the influence of the Lord Jesus Christ. But when I'm not born again, okay, the kingdom of this world Okay, the God of this world. And we read that in scripture, that people are under the sway of Satan. So when somebody is not born again, what is the influence that they carry over their lives? The influence of the kingdom of darkness. Okay, so you either belong there or you belong here. The Bible very clearly says when one is born again, we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, Colossians 1. So every human being belongs to one kingdom or the other. So if we belong to the kingdom of light, then we have the authority vested upon us uh, to overcome the kingdom of darkness. Now, the second insight for us to learn is that we have what is known as delegated authority. Because now we are citizens of the kingdom of light. Uh, if you look at certain countries in the world today, okay, uh, they have privileges as far as their passports are concerned. Um, some nations, I remember, like when I was uh, studying in this class, we had a lot of international students from so many different countries. And many of my colleagues, they had passports uh, where you don't need visa. You can just, you know, like travel around to different countries. You don't have to apply for a visa. But then we were, some others of us, we had to apply because from our country, we don't have that privilege. I, I need to get a valid visa, apply for it, you know, do the whole process, get it. Only then I can go. Okay. So when you are a citizen of a country, there are certain rights 
privileges okay uh, that are given to us now in the kingdom of light in the same way there are privileges rights that are given to us and the way i told you in certain countries they have this uh, authority which is given to them yeah okay you can go if you carry the passport of you know a particular nation yeah you go you go just land book your ticket go land in another country they'll accept you they'll just accept you stamp so that's a privilege that's a right that they have received so in the same way when you look at the kingdom of light you know, we have been vested with authority and we are uh, also you can use the term ambassadors of the kingdom of light you know ambassador means somebody who does who uh, is a representative of a, a certain place but who also carries enough influence right uh, to uh, to kind of come and give out the the uh, goodness of that place okay or the culture of that place so when uh, we today i mean today if you look at the meaning of ambassador it's just you have a representative from uh, a nation in another nation that much only but in the earlier times an ambassador would be a person uh, who would go to a new place and he would also be responsible to change the culture of that new place so in other words you are an influencer okay ambassador is influencer with authority because you come with governmental authority to change the culture change the setup you know change the the patterns of thinking uh, and subdue that place or you know make that place like the place that you came from so that is the real meaning of the word ambassador so you and i scriptures tell us that we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven and thereby we carry the authority of the kingdom of light and also we are ambassadors okay? ambassadors we we are authorized by god by the kingdom of light to go and release you know everything that the kingdom of light is on any place that we are called to so that is another understanding or insight about authority now let's move on <laughs> citizenship is recognized we are talking about two kingdoms right so in the spiritual realm citizenship is recognized meaning which kingdom are you from okay we know that in the physical it's hard to make out if you see two human beings we can't say whether they are from light or darkness but in the spiritual realm okay uh there is recognition and the good example is you know when um paul he was ministering in ephesus uh they were casting out demons okay paul and uh, his team they were casting out demons now somebody else saw the way in which paul was doing it and uh, they tried to follow it they also tried to cast out demons but when they tried doing it these are the seven sons of skiva in acts chapter 19 you no know, they are uh, beaten up by the demons and this is what the demons tell them they say jesus i know and paul i know but who are you so what is this the the uh, spirit in the demonic realm telling the seven sons of skiva basically the spirit is telling them you have no presence i don't think you're from the kingdom of light because in the spirit in the spirit realm even the demonic spirits know which kingdom each person belongs to okay these sons of skiva were not born again so they were also part of the demonic you know the the kingdom of darkness and thereby the demonic spirit is asking them jesus i know paul i know but who are you okay so there is a recognition of which kingdom you and i belong to in the spiritual realm okay so that is something that we must understand then 
uh, a person belonging to the kingdom of light has authority over the works of darkness and we can thwart it or we can overcome it okay so that is a given and that's what we've been um, talking about so far but also remember that we cannot try to do this or apply our authority in our own way we have to follow the principles in the spirit realm yes there is a kingdom of darkness and there is a kingdom of light but what if i go and i say something like oh demonic spirit i cast you out in the name of nancy you leave right now it will not work because my name does not carry the authority that the name of jesus carries so i can't do things the way i want it will not work so while we understand authority we also have to understand the principles that we must apply for our authority to be effective so there is a method of operation Okay, that also comes into play and we must respect that. So spiritual authority must be exercised in a certain way. And we've talked when we you know, spoke about prayer, so much of discussion happened about you know human will, isn't it? We said that uh, we can't try to manipulate people. We can't try to control people. That is not how God's spirit works. And in the same way, when it comes to our spiritual authority, you and I can't do that. You know, I as a pastor, maybe I want things to be done a certain way and uh, all that. So I can't use my spiritual authority to do it the way I want to get it done. That would be manipulation. Okay. So. There is a method of operation of the authority of a believer and we have to respect it. We have to respect the boundaries of that. And that's when, you know, our exercise of spiritual authority also becomes very, very effective. All right. So this is a little bit about the two kingdoms and uh, the fact that, you know, everyone belongs to one kingdom based on which kingdom you belong to. You have uh, some rights, privileges. And for us from the kingdom of light, we also have um, an opportunity to influence for the kingdom of light. Uh, and in the kingdom, in the spiritual realm, there is a recognition of which uh, realm which kingdom we belong to even the demonic spirits can recognize and finally you know there is a method of operation and we cannot try to override it okay so uh, with regard to this if at all you have any queries you just jump in okay you can unmute yourself you can ask post on the chat and uh, i i uh, am happy to stop you know for a few minutes to explain and then proceed further but if you don't have questions yet then that's also fine i can try and cover the next section here and then come back okay so i'm noticing joy is on the call joy good to have you it's been a long time hi nancy hi. same miss you a lot <laughs> how are you Thank doing you. i'm i'm good i'm good just getting oh, back okay. to to what yeah. call me. <laughs> okay wonderful wonderful great to have you back joy Thank you so much. I yeah. miss you so much. Too. Yes, yeah. Thank you. God bless. All right. So, all right. We are on page 12 here. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man. Okay. The question that John asked earlier. God, God has dominion over all the worlds that he has created. The heavens the earth but when you consider the heavens you know we we saw that scripture which said that the heavens are the lord's but the earth belongs to man god has given the responsibility of earth to man god owns everything but he has handed over the earth to be managed by man and we've also now recognized that there is an interference of satan okay so I gave you that example of a house um, uh, which is rented out and uh, it's occupied by tenants. The owner doesn't live in that place. So you could you can look at it this way. The house belongs to God 
and he has given it to man to live as a tenant to live for some time but that house also has let's say uh, you know an interfering neighbor or uh, it has a thief who who is plotting on um, um, trespassing coming in stealing things uh, breaking into the house and causing all kinds of damage for the house so that is the situation now so does it mean that uh, the that the owner doesn't own the house or god does not own the world he does not have dominion over the world no he definitely has dominion over the world but we also know that our god is a god when he has delegated and given responsibility he goes by the set laws okay can god excuse me just jump in and uh, um, get rid of that trespassing thief yeah he can but he will not do it because right now the responsibility has been handed over to the tenant or man so the keys are in man's hands and what god wants us to do is he wants us to take up this responsibility or authority that he has given us and protect this house or the world that we are supposed to manage okay so that is how you will understand the sovereignty of god and the responsibility of man both the dynamics of both of these things exist we cannot um you know just replace one with the other it doesn't work like that there is a responsibility if we sit down and say uh, yeah it's okay you know like if i one good example i can give you is imagine okay my house i don't i don't want to clean it every day so i say oh god gave me this house uh, god has blessed me i'm happy i'm not going to clean the house god you send your angels and please have my house cleaned wouldn't it be amazing if we can all have angels who come and clean our houses unfortunately it doesn't happen like that you have to wake up you know you have to at uh, some part of the day decide okay you know i am going to clear this table i am going to organize my cupboard if we don't do it it never gets done can we blame god god is responsible for my 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 you know messed up room god will say no no i am not responsible for your messed up room i gave you the room i gave you the resources i gave you the energy and the wisdom you do it so god is sovereign but man has a responsibility and we have to understand that that's when when we understand the dynamics of this we know where to step in how to step in and you know it becomes very effective the the way we exercise our authority so uh, talking about um, the same thing you know sovereignty of god and responsibility of man let's know that we have delegated responsibility so god has um, uh, remember we said in the book of genesis that we are the representatives representatives to display god his character and at the same time manage you know uh whatever he has entrusted to us really well that is our delegated responsibility delegated means uh someone who has the authority entrusts entrusts it to another person for example you now here uh, in in our uh, um country what happens is if i want to operate my bank account okay i have to go in person to the bank or i have to use nowadays you have your online banking and stuff but i have to use um, only i carry the passwords and all of that so i need to use it then i can operate let's take for example that i'm ill and i'm not able to operate my bank account and i want someone to go in person to the bank to get some work done i will need to delegate that responsibility maybe it's a sibling of mine and i say hey can you go i'm giving you the responsibility but to authorize this person 
I would need to give them, you know, a, a certain letter with my signature and all to say, so and so, on my behalf, will operate my bank account. I delegate them. I authorize them. Okay, delegated responsibility. So, on the earth, remember, the Lord, God created us to have dominion, rule and reign, subdue. We have delegated authority from who? God, because we are created in the image of God. God authorized us, human beings, to take charge of the world and run it the way he runs it. And that is our delegated responsibility. So while God is overarching dominion over the world, we have the delegated authority. Now, the operation right, of, of uh, this authority works in all these ways. The power of our tongue, the words that we speak. We see um, in scripture that God also used his authority through his words. You know, he said, let there be light, there was light. So there is, there is power in the word of God, the power of his tongue. So... <clears throat> When Jesus, he looked at the storm and he commanded and said, be still, peace, be still. The tongue, the word worked. So even for us today, you know, we can operate in all of these things. For me to uh, be that manager or representative that God wants me to be, I can use my authority through my words. So I speak, I declare. Uh, and, you know, that, that happens according to uh, God's purposes. Then, exercise of faith. Okay. So, uh, there, remember Jesus said, if you, if, if you believe um, anyone, you look at this mountain and, you know, you speak to the mountain. If you believe in your heart, then, you know, you speak to it, it will be removed and cast into the sea. So, what is operational there? Faith. Have faith in God, Mark 11, 23, uh, 24. Have faith in God. And then when believing you speak with your faith, it actually happens. So the operation of faith, again, that is our responsibility. Both of these things now, you know, the speaking, the power of the tongue and faith. Let's say as a human being, I'm not using it. I just leave it. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to use it. I know I have authority. But I will not, you know, speak blessings over my life or I will not be careful about speaking the right things over my life. Then, you know, that operation of those things will be missing in my life. But if I take charge and I say, no, the, the God's word says, you know, um, I'm blessed with uh, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly uh, places. What happens? That gets activated over my life and it is released. So I need to speak. I need to speak. When I'm going through sickness, I can't just say, okay, I resign. God, you know, you are sovereign over my life. But I can rise up and I can use all these elements that God has provided for me. And I can say no, you know, um, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. He sends his word. He heals my diseases. He forgives all my sins. He forgives. Uh, he heals all my diseases. So when I'm saying all these things, what's happening? I am using my authority in the recommended way. What is one of the principles? The power of the tongue. So I'm saying these things. I'm saying, no, I know my God will deliver me. I know my God will, you know, bring me out. He will heal my body. He will heal my mind. So when I'm saying these things, I'm using my authority. And wherever there is interference of the enemy, you know, I'm overcoming that. Exercise of faith. You know, I move by faith. Yes, God said, like Abraham, you're going to have descendants, Abraham, like the stars of the sky and the sand of the sea. And here is Abraham. Not even one son. Not even one. That's where faith comes in. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The things, um, the evidence of things not seen. So by the spoken word of God, there is a seed in Abraham's heart. And he knows God is going to do it. So that is the promise. He's holding on to the promise. How? 
by faith. So we talk about the faith of Abraham, how he trusted in God when there was nothing to see and tell that it is going to happen, but operating through faith. So all this becomes the responsibility of man. What if Abraham said, no, God, you know, please, I don't think so. It can't happen. We would never have Abraham as an example. He overcame through his faith. So this becomes the responsibility of man. I need to operate by my faith. Only then I will see the results that God wants for me. Then again, you know, there is a law of sowing and reaping. We are responsible. So by this, what we mean is, you know, uh, in scripture, it says, if you sow to righteousness, you will reap of righteousness. If you sow to sin, uh, then you will reap corruption. Okay. So if I am moving in the direction of righteousness, I can expect, you know, love, joy, peace. And all. But if I am pursuing a sinful lifestyle in any way, and I'm wondering, why is this happening to me? Uh, you know, let's say just small example. Suppose I just love to fight and get offended and, you know, be angry all the time and misunderstand people. And I'm just not willing to change. And then I reap uh, sadness, depression, problem in my relationships. And uh, there's no peace. I'm thinking, why is this happening to me, God? You said uh, that, you know, my peace I give to you. But what am I sowing? I'm sowing strife. I'm sowing offense. I'm sowing anger. What obviously I will reap, you know, uh, the results of that. But if I'm sowing peace in my relationships, I will reap peace and joy. So there is a consequence. Now, even talking about the world, you know, now we have the whole COVID thing going on. And uh, many a time people talk about the earthquakes and the floods and, you know, the polluted air and they blame God. You know, sometimes uh, th there are uh, places that term floods and earthquakes and all of that as acts of God. Acts of God. Have you heard? You know, they say acts of God. But are they really acts of God? No. God created a beautiful world. In Genesis 1, you read again and again, he says, it was good. It was good. He did this, it was good. He created a perfect, beautiful world. We are the managers of this world. You know, we are not careful about, um, you know, waste management. And we are the ones who uh, emit all kinds of, you know, gases. We are not careful about the sea, we are the ones who are you know, manufacturing plastic and dumping it into the oceans. And, you know, we are the ones, we are the ones who are um, um, felling trees in the, in the forests. Who's responsible when you look at the world and you see all these calamities and, you know, the balance is off. Uh, who's responsible? These are not acts of God. The law of sowing and reaping. The way we manage, you know, you see the results of that. So man is responsible for a lot of what is going on in the world, right? Uh, and of course, we know scriptures say that uh, the Lord Jesus, he came to redeem us. Even the earth, you know, he has come to redeem and uh, his work of redemption is at work, uh, e even in the, in the things in the earth. And we are going to see that. Uh, so the point is, to just say that God is sovereign and he is responsible for, you know, all the good and bad. It's not correct because man has a responsibility also. Okay. And as believers, we know about these aspects, right? That I said, delegated responsibility, uh, power of the tongue, exercise of faith, law of sowing and reaping. I have to engage effectively in these areas and understand these principles, then I can see the God kind of results in my life. And, um, you know, I am responsible for that. All right. So we will next talk about power and authority. Before we go any further, would like to pause. Uh, any additional thoughts do you want to add to what I'm saying or uh, have any questions?
all right so all right uh what we will do is we could go in for a break now okay it is uh 10:47 and uh, if you all can come back at uh 10:57 uh let's start the next session then because i want to continue i'm going to start another section so there'll be continuity we can uh, continue from there okay so meet you all in 10 minutes then at uh, 10:57 thank you